Greetings, blessings, good morning. Blessings, good morning, welcome, good morning. Good morning, blessings, welcome. Welcome, blessings. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Truly this morning, God deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all of the praises. He's the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. He's the king of kings. He's the great I am. He's everything that we need and we give him glory. He's our way. He's our truth. He's our life. He's the door that we go through. He's everything that we will ever need. And for that this morning, he deserves all the glory, all of the honor, all of the praises. As I say so many times, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yeshua HaMasiah, Jehovah El Elyon, and the Holy Spirit deserves the glory, the honor, and all of the praise. Why? Because they're one. And you can't praise one without praising all of them. And for that today, we give God the glory. We give him the honor, and we give him the praise. Good morning, TikTok. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, BSLN. Those of you joining us by Firestick and Apple TV and also Roku, we give God the glory, the honor, and the praises for each and every one of you taking the time out of your schedule to get in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Those of you joining us by ISO and Android apps, we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for you joining us as well for taking the time out of your schedule to get in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm excited about what our Lord and our Savior is doing in the hearts and the minds of each and every one of us as believers. God gets the glory. He gets the honor. Amen. We want to just thank God for his many, many, many blessings and how he continues to honor his word and how he continues to shift and align us. It's not about apostle space. It's not about what I want. It's about his will, his purpose being accelerated and advanced. And how does God do that? He does it through me. He does it through you. He positions and he realigns you according to his will and according to his purpose. And that's one of the things we're going to be talking about today is the blessings and the promises of God to you. I think it's important that we be reminded through the word of God of his promises, that we be reminded of what God is saying he's going to do for you, he's going to do for me. We are reminded every day that God does not fail, that God does not forget, he does not stop. He keeps on doing great and mighty things for each and every one of us. And for that, he's the one that gets the glory. He's the one that gets the honor. He's the one that's getting all the praises, amen? God has a promise for every believer, and it's up to us to accept 
the promises that he's made because guess what he keeps on doing great and mighty things amen he keeps on moving in a miraculous way amen and for that he's getting the glory for that he's getting the honor for that he's getting all of the praises amen he's the king of kings he is the lord of lords he's the lily of the valley he is the bright and morning star he is the great i am and we adore him we'll strive unto his holy and righteous name amen the blessings and the favor of the Lord are upon each and every believer. And I want you to understand that. You may not be able to see it right now, but if you remain faithful, if you continue to stand firm, if you continue to keep your faith and your trust totally in God, He will begin to reveal and He will begin to manifest every promise in His Word according to His will in your life. Notice what I said. According to His will in your life, According to what he's purposed and ordained your life to, God will begin to manifest the promises of his word. So don't, don't fear, don't be fretful, don't worry, but keep your faith and your trust totally in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I just sense such a presence this morning of the Father. I sense an anointing for healing. I don't know if you're feeling his presence like I'm feeling it right now, but there's a healing presence. There's a miracle presence that's taking place even right now. And I'm sensing the presence for signs, for wonders, and for miracles this morning. So if that's you, if you're in a place where you believe in God for a miracle, if you're in a place where you believe in God for healing, begin to give him glory, begin to give him honor, begin to give him praise just for the miracles beginning to happen in your life. One of the promises of God is that he will heal us of sickness and disease. So that's one of the promises in the word. That's one of the reasons Jesus went to the cross, that you may be healed, that you may be restored, that reconciliation may come in your life. What is reconciliation? To restore you back to Christ, to pull you from the sin and the iniquity of the enemy and to bring you back in to the fold of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's reconciliation. To restore you is to put you back in the place where you walked away or to put you back in that place where you felt like you lost. But one of the things I love about God, when he restores you, he puts you even in a better place. Somebody tell God hallelujah this morning. Somebody tell him glory this morning. I am excited about what God is doing. I am excited about how the Father is moving miraculously. I'm excited about his presence and the Holy Spirit being released upon each and every one of us. Because the Bible says in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. So if that's you, begin to just inhabit, begin to receive the presence of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Begin to just receive what God wants to pour in your life. Ask Him. Thank Him. Praise Him for pouring in your spirit, for pouring in your heart, for pouring into your life. We give God the glory the honor and the praises, amen? Because he's worthy for the pouring, for the pouring, for the pouring. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's someone on this live, your body has been wrapped in pain all night. And I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. I sense God beginning to relieve you of that pain. All pain goes now in Yeshua. I'm a seal's mighty name. All pain goes right now. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. All pain goes now. If that's you and you're dealing with pain, begin to tell God hallelujah and begin to tell him thank you for healing me of this pain, for relieving me of this pain. Someone, you've, you've been having pain in your neck, in your neck, but I see the Holy Spirit beginning to resolve, beginning to bring healing there in your neck. I feel the Holy Spirit beginning to bring healing there in your neck. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone, you've been having uh, stomach pain. You've been dealing with stomach pains like gastro-type pain. The Lord is relieving you of that right now. It goes, it goes, it goes. Tumors right now, they go. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood clots go. Someone wrote me yesterday about problems with blood clots. We decree and declare blood clots resolved, dissolved right now. We decree and declare where you're having problems with your blood that right now it's healed. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
It's healed right now in the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Father, thank you for my miracle. Praise you for my miracle. We give you glory, honor, and praise for my miracle. Begin to decree, begin to declare, begin to thank God for the miracles that he's doing in your life right now. Begin to give him glory. Even if you can't see it, say thank you. Even if you don't feel it, begin to give him praise. Because guess what? What you decree into the atmosphere, you, you shift the atmosphere. And see, when you begin to decree and declare what you desire and not what you're going through. Let me say that again. Begin to decree and declare what you desire God to do. Not what you're facing. Not what you're experiencing. Not what you're going through. That's the trick of the enemy. If he can keep you talking about what you're experiencing. If he can keep you talking about what you're facing. If he can keep you talking about what you're going through. Watch this now. He can keep you in a negative mindset. But when you begin to speak the word of God. When you begin to decree what the word of God says. When you begin to decree the desires of your heart. God's word says I will give you the desires of your heart. So God says, whatever it is that I place in your spirit, get this now, your desires become God's desires because God puts his desire for you in it, in your heart. He puts what he's ordained your life to in, in your heart, in your spirit. And you begin to desire that thing. You begin to do whatever you can to fulfill that thing. You begin to, to, to see the vision. In other words, God begins to give you the vision then he begins to give you the resources to fulfill it. He begins to give you everything you need to get it done. And you say, well, Lord, how am I going to do it? God says, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm going to do it through you. Let me say that again. You say, Lord, how am I going to, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to pay this? Wait a minute. I'm going to fix this through you. I'm going to pay this to you, through you. I'm going to give you strategic strategies. I'm going to tell you exactly how to move. I'm going to tell you exactly when to move. And if you obey my voice, you're going to see your breakthrough. You're going to see your miracle. You're going to see your turnaround. Because it is my desire for you to have a miracle, a breakthrough, a turnaround. Guess what, saints? When we're led by the Father, when we're led by the Holy Spirit, and we begin to allow Him to lead us, and we, we don't question, we don't second guess. When we know the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, and we know with beyond the shell of a doubt, the presence of God is upon us. And God has given you confirmation after confirmation. And you begin to step out in what you believe. You begin to step out in the measure that God has ordained your life to. When you begin to allow the Lord to shift you and to align you according to his will, that's when you begin to see change. That's when you begin to see that turnaround. That's when you begin to see that breakthrough. Why? Because you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. Somebody say, lead me, Holy Spirit. Somebody say, guide me, Holy Spirit. Somebody begin to decree and to declare, Father, I surrender my will. I surrender my way, my want, my desire. And I seek your face. I seek your presence. I seek your glory. You're the one that's getting all the glory out of my life. You're the one that's getting all the honor out of my life. You're the one that's getting all the praises out of my life. You're the one that's bringing turnaround in my situation, in my circumstance, in my storm. You're the one that's getting all of the glory. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Somebody tell him glory this morning because he is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor, the praise. Now somebody just begin to type fresh oil, fresh fire. Fresh anointing. Decree it, declare it. Say, Father, what I had yesterday is gone. I thank you for a fresh outpouring now. I thank you for a renewing right now. Somebody say, Father, let your fire fall fresh on me now. Let your fire shift me now. Let your fire consume every infirmity. Let your fire consume every sickness. Let your fire consume every disease. Let your fire bring about that shift. Bring about that aligning, that realigning in my life. Cure me in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMessiah. Father, we give you glory now. We give you praise now. As we press in 
as we enter in. So let me help you with something. I sense the shifting of God. I sense the shifting of the Holy Spirit. I sense God bringing about another shift. Excuse me. I sense the Father bringing about another shift. And as God begins to shift you, as he begins to bring that change and that turnaround in your life, begin to just thank him for the shift. As I'm sitting and as I'm looking in the spirit, I'm seeing the Lord opening doors. These doors are for sons and daughters in the kingdom. I see promotion in the spirit. Uh, I see God promoting you. Somebody begin to say, Father, thank you for promotion. Begin to decree it. Begin to declare it. If that's you, you've been believing God for promotion. Begin to tell him thank you. New doors of opportunity. New doors of opportunity. Not just a opportunity, but a better position. If that's you, you've been believing God to reposition you, to realign you. Begin to tell him thank you this morning for repositioning me, for realigning me. I just sense a, 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 a moment here of just beginning to give God praise for what he's already done. For what he's already doing. For how he's already moving in your life, in my life. Somebody just tell him hallelujah. Begin to tell him thank you for who he is and for what he's doing in your life right now. God is getting all the glory. God is getting all the honor. God is getting all the praise. So see, it is the praise that shifts God. It is your willingness to get in his presence and give him glory. That shifts him. See, that brings that change in your life. That, that brings that rearranging in your life, that aligning with his purpose and his destiny. That he, he repositions you for breakthrough. Tremendous breakthrough. Uh, 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 in other words, where you're being restricted, where you're being restrained, where you're in that struggle. So you got to understand something, saints. There's so much going on in the atmosphere right now. There's so many attacks from the enemy. Such tremendous spiritual warfare going on. The spirit of struggle. In other words, the enemy is doing everything he can to keep you in the struggle. Somebody decree and declare, Father, I'm breaking out of the struggle. Your word decrees and declares to me that you came to set me free from the strongholds. Decree it, declare it. Speak it into the atmosphere. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. Go. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Decree it, declare it. God is getting the glory. That's it. God is getting the honor. God is getting the praise. Speak it into the atmosphere. Shift your atmosphere. Begin to believe God to turn things around right now. That's it. Decree it. That individual that's in the hotel room, begin to decree and declare a shift. Now, wait a minute now. Watch this now. Don't decree anything you can't believe God will do for you. If you don't believe God will do it, don't waste your breath because you're wavering in your faith. But if you believe beyond the shallow of a doubt that God can turn your situation around and you speak from the depths of your spirit and be begin to give God a glory for where he is leading you, for where he is carrying you, even in the process, give him praise from sincerity. Father, even in this state, you know, I went over to a woman of God's house and I, I walked in. And you know, there wasn't much in that woman of God's house. She didn't have much. But she was excited about the little things that God do. I remember many years ago, I went to a couple's house and we were working at their residence. And I was going in to, to fix their satellite. And it was a two-bedroom house had a living room and a kitchen and two small bedrooms and there was a man and there was a woman there that didn't have much old furniture just observed wood floors old old kind of house years old probably built in the early uh, 50s but you know something I noticed about that man and that woman they were happy they were in love with one another and they were content in the state that they're in many of us the Lord has blessed us with so much and we're still miserable we're still unhappy we're not excited we're not appreciative of all the things God has already done but we're looking for him to do more and more and more and more and more 
Many of us, some of us even die believing God is going to do something else. Instead of saying, Father, you know, I'm grateful for what you've already done. I'm grateful for how you've already moved, for how you've already blessed me. If you do anything else, I give you glory. But I am thankful for what you've already done. Somebody said, reach in Jesus. That's it. Be grateful. Because see, guess what? Let me, um, let me explain something to you. When you get to the place in God where you're grateful for where he's carrying you and where he's already put you, what God does is he continues to pour. He continues to bless. You don't even have to ask him. He totally surprises you. I was speaking with someone yesterday and they were sharing with me how the Lord surprised them, how the Lord blessed them. Guess what God is doing? He's releasing his blessings. He's releasing his surprises. Some of you may remember on the live I said back here a couple of weeks ago, I took a piece of paper, I don't see it now, and I said, God is serving notice to some of you. And I said, in the notice that he's serving to some of you, his blessings, his abundance. And I took a piece of paper and I wrapped it up like a note, like a notice. Because that's what I saw the angel coming out, releasing notices. Let me share something with you. God is still releasing notices. One of the things you have to understand about a notice is it's a surprise at times. You don't anticipate it. You don't expect it. It just shows up. It just arrives. Sometimes somebody will tell you, you, you're looking at this, but you're not paying any attention. You're not noticing what's really happening. Some of you are in situations where the Lord is moving and, and doing things strategically, and you're not noticing what's happening. You're not seeing the moves of God. Anybody play chess? To play chess, you have to understand the moves. You have to strategize. The job, the goal is not to be taken out by a pawn or by a knight. The goal is not to be taken out by the queen or for that matter, even the king. We know the most powerful person on a chessboard is a queen. The queen is more powerful than the king. But some of us fail to realize we have a king. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the king over everything you face, you'll go through. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about God empowering you, God activating you, because that's a part of the plan of God. But we don't want you to, under, to forget He's still in the blessing business. He's still pouring. He's still favoring you. He's still blessing you. He's still shifting and aligning you and I with his will. He's still reminding us, I am no respect to person. What I will do for one, I will do for another. If you keep your faith and your trust totally in me, you'll see your miracle. You'll see that shift. You'll see that change. You'll see that turn around. Why? Because God's doing it. Not man, but God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's doing the impossible. What man says can't be done. God says, oh yeah. Guess what? He says, I'm expanding you. I'm enlarging you. I'm expanding your territory. I'm enlarging your territory. Let me do it. You can't do it, but, but let me give you the strategies. See, I shared with someone yesterday, I was speaking with them on the phone, and I began to tell them to decree every single day the prayer of Jabez. Father, enlarge my coast. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my test territory. Enlarge my coast. Keep your hands on me. And protect me from evil. Begin to decree it. Let me tell you something, saints. I've been decreeing that daily. And I have watched God expand, increase, expand, increase, expand, increase. And he continues to expand. He continues to increase. Because you speak, 
your destiny. You decree it according to the word of God. And God begins to bring it into manifestation. You can't see it at the moment. But all of a sudden you look up and you say, my God, look at what the Father has done. Look at what God is doing every day in my life. You go back, I was talking to someone yesterday, and they said, when I look back a year ago versus why I am today, I am so grateful and so thankful to God for where he's brought me in my wisdom, in my knowledge, in the lacking of understanding. See, God is doing great and mighty things. Sometimes we don't see it. It's kind of like being, being in the middle of a situation. You don't see everything going on in that situation, but when you back away from it and you take another look, you begin to see what you haven't seen. So for those of you taking notes today, God is in the blessing. He's in the promises keeping of his word. But not just his word, but his word to you. There's a prophetic word that the Father has released to you. There's a covenant that the Father has made to you. God has not forgotten the covenant of his word. He's not forgotten the promise of his word. Many years ago, I was standing on Pilot Mountain in North Carolina praying. And as I was standing on the mountain, the Lord had me walk over to the edge. And as I looked out the edge, I saw the eagles flying. I saw the eagles flying. But when I looked out off the edge of the ledge of that mountain, as far as I could see, God spoke this to me. He said, my son, he said, I'm going to expand you as far as you can see. That was a promise he made me. At that time, I didn't see how. There wasn't no YouTube. There wasn't no Facebook. There wasn't no, no uh, Fire TV, no Apple TV, no Roku. Those things didn't exist when God spoke that in my spirit. Because see, the Lord can speak things in your spirit now that years from now will manifest. And you'll be like, Lord, I, I didn't see it then, but I see how you're moving now. See, he'll give you the strategy. Let me tell you something. If God makes a covenant with you and you remain faithful, he'll manifest it. That's what you've got to understand. When God makes a covenant, he will manifest the covenant that you made with you. But remember this. God's covenant is dependent upon your obedience to his word. It's dependent upon you trusting what he said. It's depending upon you having faith even though you can't see how. That's important. When you can trust what the word of God says and you can't see your way. You can't see how God's going to do it. Because guess what? God's not going to tell you to see how I'm going to do it. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy 31, correction, chapter 31, verse number 8, God says these words. He says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. See, remember this. If God made a covenant with you, you say, well, Apostle Spates, God has not made a covenant with me. Yes, he has. He may not have made a personal covenant one-on-one, -on -one, but there are many promises in the word that the Lord has promised you, that he's promised me as I live holy, as I live righteous. He honors his word. That's the covenant he's made with the entire church, the entire believer of Jesus Christ. You have a promise. That's God's covenant to the body of Christ. That's God's covenant. He speaks to his sons and his daughters. He made a covenant with me on the mountain. And I can tell you this day, he's fulfilling every word. And every time I think God has done something, 
He surprises me and he does something else. He tells me do this and I do it. He tells me do this and I do it. He tells me to do this and I, I, I've got to the place now, I don't even ask God why. I just start seeking and searching. And he leads me right into blessing after blessing. Expansion after expansion. God wants to do it for you. He wants to do it for everyone who will allow him to. That's it. Obedience. The promises of God are conditional. And if you haven't read Deuteronomy chapter 28, go read it. Because Deuteronomy chapter 28 applies to your life today with God just as it did in the day of the Old Testament. He gives us a guideline to live by. And if we live by that guideline, we'll see the blessings and the promises of God manifest in our lives. A lot of people say that's Old Testament. Well, if it's so old, why are what you're doing now not working in your life? So you have to remember something. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand. And God's will not go against his word. He will not shift. He will not change. He will stand on his word. And that's what he wants you to know. That's what he wants you to understand. See, God has promises. Number one, he promises to strengthen you. That's one of his promises. So just in case you're weary, you're worn out, you're tired. God promises in the word to strengthen you. God promises in his word that he will take care of all of your needs. He will take care of your needs. That's his promise. Now a need is not something I want. So don't miss it. Don't mess up. If it's something you need, God's word promises that he's going to take care of all of the things that you need. You need a car, he'll supply it. You need resonance, he'll supply it. You need food, he'll supply it. Now let me teach you the difference. You need a motorcycle. No, you don't need that. You need transportation, he'll supply it. See? See, he gives you the thing you need, clothing, he'll supply it. Now, he didn't say, I'm going to give you Gucci. But he'll supply something affordable until you get to that place where you can buy that. If you allow him to lead you there. See, he will do what he said he was going to do. I remember many years ago, I received a prophetic word from a man that got in a little, little storefront church shared with me. He said, I see you doing automobile transitions. I was real young in my early, uh, mid 20s, late 20s. And matter of fact, I think I was about 31, 31, 32 years old when he released that word to me. And when he released the word to me, he said, in six months, you'll be doing automobile transition. What I didn't catch was he was telling me, God is changing the path and the course of your life. I walked, went to work every morning wearing uniforms for maintenance, the engineering department. And he turned around at the prophesied the change. He said, the Lord said, tell you that you're going to get up in the morning and you're going to wear suits to work. He said, the only thing you're going to have to buy is your t-shirts, your underwears, and your socks. He said, the company you're going to be working for is going to supply everything else you need. Some of you have heard me tell this. I'm telling it to you this morning to let you know that whatever you go, whatever you need for that company, God will supply it. Because what he did for me was I needed $1,000 suits. And guess what God did? The company paid for the suits. 
They paid for the shoes. All I had to provide was underwear, t-shirts, and socks. They bought the neckties. Whatever I wore, they paid for it. Now, it was what I needed for the assignment. Catch what I'm saying? For the assignment that God had given me, I needed to dress like millionaires dressed because I was working with millionaires. See, God took me to a place and he provided what I needed in that season. That's what I'm saying. Whatever season you're walking in, wherever God carry you, he's more than capable of providing what you need. I'm talking to somebody right now. That's why Paul said, whatever state I'm in there, will I be content? If God put you there, it's, if he opens the door and gives you a job that you know you're not qualified for, if God opened the door, don't you understand? He's going to give you favor with someone that's going to help you qualify. What are you worried about? Lord, I got this job and I don't understand nothing about what I was doing. When the Lord took me to the position I got, I knew nothing about what I was doing. You know what the man told me? He said, don't worry about that. I'm going to train you. And he started training me. And let me tell you something. There were days I wanted to get in my car and drive off that mountain and tell them people to take that job and shove it. And one day I did. And God made me go back. He said, your work is not finished. It's kind of like he did Hagar when she left. She was upset with Sarah and she left. And God stopped him. I said, where are you going? She started telling him what was going on. God said, I'm aware of all of this going on. He said, she said, so your name is going to be the Lord of Jehovah Elor because you see all. That's where the name Jehovah, because Haggai was going through a storm. And God told her, he said, submit yourself and go back. And continue to be the servant. I'll deal with Sarah. See, you got to understand, sometimes you'll be in a storm and the Lord made me submit myself and go back to Diamond Creek and finish out the assignment that he's given me. I'm talking to somebody right now. You're thinking about quitting your job. Submit. And go back. See, one of the things I love about God is I may come on this live to do something a certain way. But God takes it and carries it another direction. And the reason he does that is because I'm always asking him, what do your people need today? They need encouraging. They need to be inspired. They need to be reassured that I'm right there. It may look gloom in your life. It may look discouraging in your life. But you're right now. God is right there with you. Your storm right now. God is right there with you. The midst of what you're experiencing right now, God is right there with you. See, that's a part of the process. That's where the empowering comes from. That's where the anointing comes from. That's where the glory can come in. Why? Because you go through the process. It's just a process. But the key is, are you willing to obey in that season? Could be a marriage situation. Could be a financial situation. Could be a home, loss of home situation. See, people are going through a whole lot of stuff. Could be a sickness in your body. Could be the fact that you can't afford the meal. A meal to put on your table. But don't say what you can't afford. You got to change your language. You got to begin to say, my God can do anything but fail. You got to trust him in spite of what it looks like. I remember hearing so many people say I didn't have the money. And I trusted God. And I went to the store and I grabbed a few things. And I put it in my buggy. And I went up to the register. Knowing 
There was nothing in my account. And trusting and believing God. And when the register rung on up, it came back, declined. But the cashier heard God say, pay for that. And the cashier said, I got this. I got you. Don't worry about it. Your meal came because you were obedient and you trusted God. You went exactly where he said go. You did exactly what he said do. And he promised. His promises manifested because you trusted him. The problem with many of us is we don't keep our faith and our trust wholly in God. Do you understand what that means? It means when you don't understand, don't try to come to the conclusion that I'm going to say no what my word already says. I'm going to do what I said in my word. That's why it says lean not to your own understanding because you, 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 you try to understand how God's going to do things. That's not what God wants you to do. He already told us in the word. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. When are we going to get that? What you think I'm going to do is not even in my spirit. How you think I'm going to move is not even in my spirit. That's not how I'm going to do it. You are deceiving yourself by believing I'm going to move away that I never even thought about. Your life was preordained. Some of you are going to catch this. It was predestined. So God knew long before you ever thought about how he was going to get you out of your situation, he already predestined how it's going to happen. He's not worrying about what you're worrying about. He already had the solution long before you were ever born. Catch that. He had the solution to your situation before you got to 2023. He had the solution to your situation before you ever get to 2030, to 2050. God already knows your outcome. So you're living in the now, so your thought process is in the now. God is the God of the past, the present, and the future. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow before we ever get there. He knows what's going to happen 20 years from now before we ever get there. That's what he wants you to know. It's I already planned it. Your life, according to Jeremiah, 29 and verse 11 has already been planned by God. You've already been predestined to fulfill purpose of destiny. Father, lead me the way you've ordained my life. Lead me in the path you've already prepared for me. So you got to remember, God promises that he's going to give you rest. That's a promise in his word. There's rest for the weary. He promises in the word, not only that he's going to give you rest, but that he will answer your prayers. God will answer. When you pray, believe in God, he'll answer your prayers. Now watch this. It may not be the answer you want. He may say yes. He may say no. He may say, be still, don't move. But God, I, I got to act when you don't see what's ahead of you. But I prayed about, I, I said, be still. Some things happened overnight while you were sleeping. Now I'm telling you, be still. Change took place overnight. Be still. Don't move right now. Because something happened that you're not aware of. Be still. Trust me. I'm looking out for your best interests. 
Sometimes we don't see that when we're in the moment. I, 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 I don't want the enemy to take what is mine from you, so just be still. I'm talking to somebody right now. God promises that he will work everything out according to his will, not your will. That's a part of his blessings. He's going to work it out. Not you. He will. He says, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be right there. He says, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to be right there. I'm going to set you free. Whatever's holding you, Father set me free. Witchcraft. A spirit of suicide. A spirit of divination. The porter that I opened, that I shouldn't have opened, now I'm hooked. God says, I'm going to deliver you. See, that's why Jesus stepped down through 42 generations to set the captive free. That's why he did it. See, that's a part of the promises in the word of God. That I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to set you free. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. God has plans. There are hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of blessings in the word of God. Watch this. You get up in the morning. You get up, you pray, you get through praying and you sit down. And you say, Father, what is the word for your people today? And you get nothing. Father, what your people need today? And you get nothing. And then you get up. You've been studying the word, but God haven't given you a, a specific message. Now, watch this. The reason we study the word of God, some of you are going to catch this today. It's not because that's the message for today. It could be the message for a year from now. The reason you study the word is in case you walk in a service and God change your message. And he tell you to go someplace else and preach. Because there's someone that I've given the clearing call in your mouth to that's going to hear my voice here. You hear people get up and say, you know, I was going to preach this, but God gave me this. He shifted me this way. One person can shift your whole message. If it's the season for them and their spirit to be pierced by God, one individual. I thought about coming off of Facebook and the Lord told me to be still. And then he reminded me, he said, your page, if it reached one person, that's one more than a hand. So it's not in the small numbers. It's not in the large numbers. It's in the reach, the reach and grab. I was talking to someone and they was telling me about how small their platform was. And they were having all these reasons why things wouldn't happen because I had this big platform and they got this T90 platform. They failed to realize this came one person at a time. One by one by one by one. It's your persistence. It's your continuous staying with God. And God rewards you because of your obedience. See? And he keeps on rewarding you because of your obedience to him. That's how you grow with God. It's your, in other words, he says, can I trust you for 30 days to do the same thing? Can I trust you for 60 days to do the same thing? Can I trust you for 90 days to do the same thing? Can I trust you for 120 days to do the same thing? See? Can I trust you for 240 days to do the same thing? 
the more you're persistent, the more God can release to you. See, he gives it to you because you prove to him that you're going to be dependable. Notice a lot of people don't get promotion at work, excuse me, and they say, I should have got that promotion, but you're always late. And when the boss asks you to do something, you complain about it. But because you've been with the company a long time, you feel like you deserve that promotion. No, 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 no. It's about attitude. Your approach. Your approach determines the latitude that God will allow you to go to. Your attitude plays a vital role. St. John, chapter 16, verse 33 says these words. I have told you these things so that you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. Jesus says, I'm telling you these things that you'll have peace. And that you know you will be an overcomer. Some of us are in storms right now. We're trying to figure out how in the world I'm going to get out of the mess I've got myself in. You're not. You're not. You're not going to get out of the mess you got yourself in. God will deliver you. Go to him and repent. Acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge your error. Acknowledge your mistake. Ask for forgiveness. And ask God for a strategy to bring you out of it. Watch what happens. See, God has an order. And his order is not like man's. Psalms 32, verse number 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Notice something. David says in that verse, God will instruct you. God will lead you the way you should go. He'll tell you how to move. He'll give you the strategy. How to maneuver. Not only that, but I will counsel you with my loving eyes on you. So even in your struggle, if you'll trust me, I'll bring you out. You know, sometimes... We go through things in life and we'll pick up the phone and we'll tell someone, I need to go through spiritual counseling. And then as soon as they start talking, we start rejecting. Well, I don't want to hear that. But well, wait a minute. What you don't want to hear is the medicine you need at that moment. Pray for your nine in Jesus' name. What you need at that moment, that's what you don't want to hear. That's the medicine you need. Truth, a lot of people don't want to hear. I was speaking to someone yesterday. And I love the fact that we could dialogue back and forth with truth. I love the fact that this individual was open to acknowledge the error and the mistake that they had made. And we could dialogue back and forth as two adults and have a decent conversation and point out error and mistake and this individual could embrace it. Because that, that's, see, that's how you begin to shift. That's how you begin to change. When you can sit down and talk to someone and God can begin to shift and change you in the process. See, some people expect change to happen instantly. No. God gives you strategic strategies in every session. Every time you open up your word, God gives you another measure. Watch this. Every time you get a fresh impartation, he shifts your spirit more. So I begin to give this individual scenarios. And one of the things, if you know, if you've been on my lives, you know I use a lot of scenarios. Because scenarios is common sense knowledge. You take common sense knowledge and you apply it to the Word of God and you see how the Word of God is so much greater. 
Sometimes we try to take the word of God and apply it, but we don't apply it using common sense or, using, or apply it from the corner perspective. Some people say, I don't do that. You don't have to. If you apply it from the corner perspective, you'll see how much greater the word of God is versus who you are. That's the purpose for doing it that way. God instructs you. God leads you. He guides you. He alters your step. Psalms 37 verses 23 through 24 says these words. The Lord makes firm steps of the one who he delights in. God will give you a firm. In other words, some of us, we don't have firm steps. We have sinking steps. If you walk on the beach, as the water comes in, the dirt softens and you leave footprints. But if you go out there early in the morning and there's no water been on it, you can walk on that soil, on that dirt, and you can barely see a footprint. But as soon as that water come in, the ground softens and you leave footprints as you walk. Step by step, by step, by step, you leave in footprints. God instructs you how to go. Watch this now. Notice I said when the dirt comes in, you leave footprints. But if you're following God, there's no footprints. At least you don't see them but they're already there. You don't see how, but the way has already been made. See, you got to trust God. You got to trust him even though you don't see the prince. You don't see the path. One of the things about a trailblazer is they cut a path. They set a path. They don't do what everybody else is doing. They go the way God leads them. Because guess what? God's doing something totally different. So if you fall in the crowd, you might want to shift. God may want to do something different with you. He, wanna, he may want to carry you a different direction from the way the crowd is going. But you got to allow him to do that. You see, you set the pace. That's what apostles do. That's what trailblazers do. They set the path. They don't follow. They go the direction God leads them because God will lead them directions. You look up and say, wow, I never thought about that. I need to look into that. I need to check on that. Why? Because God is speaking directly to the spirit of his son, directly to the spirit of his daughter. He's telling them how I want you to move. I want you to do this, not that. I want you to go here, not there. That's the God you serve. Why? Because I'm carrying you a different way. I'm doing something different with you. All you got to do is trust me. You can't see it right now. No. You can't see it right now. But years down the road, you'll watch it. People will begin to follow your path. They're like, wow. The Lord led me a certain way. He told me to go a certain direction. And as I went that direction, change began to come. That's why it's important to hear the voice of God. Look at the next verse. Verse 24 in Psalms 37, verse 24 says, Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. God upholds you. You ever heard the song? He's got the whole world in his hand. God upholds you with his hand. The way God upholds you, people may not understand. Because God does it his way. He don't do it in a way people can understand. What they say is why? How? Wow. 
It was the way God did it. I never saw that coming. I know you did. I didn't see it coming. How could you? I didn't see God moving certain ways. How can you? I didn't see God blessing certain ways. How can you? What chapter verse? Psalms 37, verses 23 and 24. And now we're going to Matthew 11, verses 28 and 29. Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who are you seeking? Who are you talking to? Are you going to God? Greetings. Are you going to the Father first? Or are you doing your own thing? He says, take my yoke. Watch this now. Many of us are yoked in sin and in equity. I want to make this crystal clear. We're yoked in ungodliness and unholiness. We're yoked in relationships that is not of God. God says, take my word, my yoke. And learn of me. Then he says, For I am gentle and humble and heart. I'll give you what you need to unyoke you through my word. I'll give you what you need to untangle you through my word. Because, and you will find rest for your souls. He says, I'll give you what you need. Take my yoke. Now, this is my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. A lot of folks say, I can't rest. Read the word of God. When I start reading the word of God, I fall asleep. That's because the devil don't want it in your spirit. Excuse me. I was reading an email, a text from someone yesterday, or a comment from someone, on YouTube and they were talking about how they were listening to the message and they fell into a deep sleep and they had a dream while they were sleeping they were listening to my voice and they fell asleep I don't know how many people I've talked to they say they turn the message on and sleep playing it someone emailed me and said you've been on all day long and how grateful but it's not about me it's about the God in me. That's what I want you to understand. It's not about Apostle Spates. It's about the God in me. He's the one that's opening your ear to hear his voice through me. I'm just a vessel. God is the one that's doing everything else. And that's what you've got to understand. It's God, not me. It's the Father, not me. He's the one doing everything. Somebody tell God hallelujah. God's word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, these words. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. So you ain't strong. So you fall all the time. That's why we get mercies every morning God renews his mercies for us every morning now watch this that don't give you an excuse to sin that don't give you an excuse to fall into ungodliness and unholiness you don't have an excuse for that he says my grace is sufficient for you he says for my Authority, my power is perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about the weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. David speaks. Paul correction speaks. Paul speaks. You got to understand something. God wants to shift you. So you say, I'm not strong. I can't handle it. I can't deal with this. I don't know how to fix it. 
God says, I didn't ask you to fix it. I didn't ask you to deal with it. I told you to trust me. I'll make you strong if you'll just follow the instructions. I'll empower, I'll activate you if you'll just follow the instructions. If you'll just do what I say, if you'll just obey my word, change will come. We'll do good for a while and all of a sudden we'll go back. Let me tell you something. When you start doing what God has called your life to, that's when the enemy would make the pleasures of sin look good. He'll start pulling you to ungodliness and unholiness. You got to see the devil for who he is. You got to see him for what he does. He will do everything he can to stop you from excelling. He'll make the work of the kingdom look like you're wasting your time. I'm talking to somebody right now. He will make the work of the kingdom look like you're wasting your time. Because it will look like nothing is being done. I pray for that church family right now in Jesus' name. When you begin to accelerate and advance in God, that's when the devil will make you think you're not doing anything. You're not doing nothing. You're just wasting time. Let me tell you something. When you're working for the kingdom, it might look like you're wasting time. Don't you deceive yourself. Anybody that know me, if you know me personally, you know I stay busy. I'm always doing something for the kingdom. If I'm going to be a busy body, it's going to be for the things of God. Because you know what the word says? Love the Lord God with all thy strength. That means you physically wear yourself out for the kingdom of God. That's all. That means you're putting every due diligence inside of you toward the work of the kingdom. You're not laying home on yourself and making excuses in front of the TV looking at whatever you can, but you're utilizing your spirit to seek God for more. Give me more. See, when I, when I accomplish things, I check those off my list. Because that's done. That's my achievement. I'm successful at that. Now let's work on something else. How else can I grow the kingdom of God? What else can I do to expand your kingdom? See? That's how you grow with God. You never stop excelling and advancing and promoting the kingdom. You keep doing it. You keep going. You keep going. You keep. You go through. You do things people never imagined you'd ever do. And as soon as they think you got, they got you figured out. God will come back and say, "Bam! I'm not gonna do that. Why? Because that's the God you serve. Remember, He knows your future. They don't. You don't. You don't know your future." Only God knows it. That's why you have to trust him blindly because his blessings and his promises will manifest in your life if you trust him. What is faith? Faith, now faith, is the substance of things hoped for. It's the manifestation of what God put in your spirit to come forth. Not what you want to do, what God says, I planned for you. I plan to take you here. I plan to take you there. I plan to take you here. See, that's faith. Let me finish this. Weakness. It says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about the weaknesses so that the crisis power may rest on me. See, you want the power of the Holy Spirit to rest on you. You want the power of God to rest on your life. Verse number 10 says, That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in salts, in hardships, in persecution, 
in difficult in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. So just in case you are being insulted, just in case you're in hardship, what's hardship? Tribulations. Can't afford to eat. Can't afford your rent. Can't afford your car paper. Can't afford your bills. As soon as you get one paid for, you're struggling to pay another one. That's hardship. Persecution is when people are attacking you, coming at you one time after another. Every time you turn around, somebody's attacking you. They're saying something negative about you. The devil is coming at you from every direction in the demonic realm. That's persecution. In other words, every time you raise your head up, the enemy does what he can to make you fall. In difficulties. We all have difficult times. Struggles in our lives. But I am weak. Then I am strong. Watch this. There's two eyes there. Some of us only see one. We see the eye in the flesh. And then they see the eye in the flesh. Watch Paul. There's two eyes there. Eye of the flesh and eye of the spirit. Eye of the flesh and I, Christ. There's two eyes there. I made strong in Christ. I made strong in Christ Jesus when I'm weak. I made strong through the word of God when I am weak. There's two eyes there. He talks about the eye that has to die so the eye of Christ can resurrect. When I'm weak, I'm made strong because the word builds me. It molds me. It shapes me. It aligns me. It increases me. I'm made strong through the word. I'm empowered through the word of God. That's when I'm made strong. When I realize in my ability I can't do it, but when I apply the word of God and the laws of God, when I do it according to the will of God, I'm made strong. My spirit is increased. My faith in Christ is increased. Because in my ability, my physical ability, my carnal mindset, I can't do it. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they kept saying, I can't do this. I want to do it, but I can't do it. The problem is not that I can't. you got to remember, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Not through my flesh, not through my, my carnal mindset. I do all things through Christ. He's the one. The Holy Spirit. He's the one. The Word of God. It's the one that empowers me. The bread of life. Jesus Christ. Living inside of me. I can do all things through Christ. That's where the power comes from. The Word. See, the Word kills the flesh. It kills the will of this flesh. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says these words. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. You got to remember something. God is the one that will lead you. He's the one that will guide you. He's the one who will alter your steps. You said, God, yes. Jehovah. The spirit of Jehovah. The Holy Spirit will lead you. He will guide you. He will alter your steps if you will follow. Because at the time he wants to lead you, your flesh ain't going to want to go. At the time he wants to lead you, excuse me, your flesh is going to find reason why it won't work. At the time he wants to lead you, your flesh is going to say, I can't do this. There's no way. I don't see how. Then you're going to be reminded of what the word of God says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Lean not. Trust in the Lord with all your spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your spirit. 
Trust in the Lord with all your spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your spirit. Not that piece of meat that beat in your chest. That's not the heart God is talking about. He's talking about your spirit. Let your spirit be led by my spirit. I can't make it no plainer than that. Let your spirit be led by the Holy Spirit. Trust comes in believing the word of God. Trust comes through the word of God. What did the word say about that situation? What does my word say about that circumstance? Trust my word and my word will lead you to truth. Depend on my word and my word will lead you to truth. You won't faint. Jeremiah 29, I told you earlier, Jeremiah 29, 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you. Your life is predestined. Declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. People always tell you, the Lord's going to do this to you and the Lord's going to do that to you. And you're going to go to hell and you're going to go to this and this, and this going to happen. You ain't going to succeed at this and you ain't going to succeed at that and God ain't going to do this and God ain't going to do that and God and God and God. Wait a minute, hold on. That is not what the word says. That's what your mouth say. My Bible tells me God has a plan for you and me. My Bible tells me God is going to deliver me and he will deliver you if you let him. Declares the Lord. He says to prosper you and not to harm you. So people that's always wishing something bad happened to you. That's why something bad always happened to them. Because they've dug a ditch for you. They're hoping you fall in it. And they fall in it themselves. And they always wonder why nothing ever happens to you. You know why? Because they want it to happen. Because they're gloating that it happens. Because they got somebody watching you fail. Watching you fall. And guess what God says? You're not going to fall. Because you surrender. You repent it. You acknowledge your sin and your iniquity. You've got it straight. You've lined your life up with my word. You're not going to fall. They're going to be waiting forever. They're going to die waiting. They've become your enemy. And God's going to watch you let them die. In other words, he's going to allow you to see them go to the grave, hoping that you falter, hoping that you fall. Rather than repenting, acknowledging, I was wrong too. Rather than repenting and acknowledging, I'm looking at this from the wrong perspective. My heart is not geared toward you, God. See, because if you're wishing your brother fail or fall, you're the enemy of God. Do you know that? Do you know you cannot wish bad on a believer? The Bible tells us not to do that. It says we are to build our brothers, not to wish they falter, not to wish they fail but to encourage them that you can get up out of this situation. God has something better for you. Encourage them. God will turn it around if you trust him. See, you got to encourage them, not discourage them. People come to you all the time. And they're always discouraging you. When you when they leave your presence, you feel worse than, they, than you did when they came. Close the door on that. If I hang around somebody and when they leave my presence, I feel worse than I did when they came in my presence, I shut that down. I say, I don't need anything toxic in my life. I don't need drama from a believer in my life. Because a believer with drama ain't a true believer. They still got some growing up to do. They still got some maturing to do. They still got the, some reading the word of God to do. See, we got a lot of folk to get angry with people because they teach you to be positive. Because they teach you to see the good in God and not to focus on all bad. That's what God wants you to see. He wants you to see that I'm a loving God. I'm a caring God. I'm a God of passion. Jesus would tell us to love one another and then teach us to hate one another. 
He teaches us to hate sin and iniquity, ungodliness and unholiness, filth, the things that stain your white garment. That's what you hate, demonic forces, the enemy, the devil himself, that's who you hate. But you love the body of Christ. You love that son and that daughter that's struggling, that's trying. You build them, you lift them up, you encourage them, you inspire them. So you fail, get up. I fail too. Two people following, when running, two people running in a race, and they're running side by side. If one of them fall and the other notice they're not beside them, they stop, they go back and help them. And we got to do this together, bro. That's all right, we're behind, we'll pick up speed. See, you don't leave your brother struggling or struggling. You reach and grab him and you pull him along with you. When you're training to run, you if, if, if the coach think that you can run faster, they put you up with people. They tag you with people that will force you to run. They tag you with people they will pull out of you what's there. You just don't see it. If anybody ever ran track, you know what I'm talking about. That coach will put you with somebody that can run. To pull out of you what's there that you don't see. In other words, they'll push you beyond your limitation. Notice what I said. Beyond your limitation. For many of us have limited God in our own mind. That's why the word comes to take you and to break the barrier that you've set up in your mind. You're only limited in your ability, not in God's, because God has no limitations. You're only limited in what you, what you feel you can do, because I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. How does God strengthen me? He strengthens me through worship. He strengthens me through praise, through magnifying, through edifying, and exalting his holy and righteous name. He strengthens me because I desire to be strengthened through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the word of wisdom, through the word of knowledge. He strengthens me through the Holy Spirit. He gives me what I need. He'll give you what you need if you will trust it. He'll give you what you need if you'll rely on him. See, you got to understand something about God. God's promises are loaded with longevity. He'll give you a long life. His promises are loaded with wealth and prosperity. His promises are loaded with health and happiness. His promises are loaded with love and virtue. God's promises are loaded with desire, a desire to succeed, a desire to live. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. See, his promises are loaded. But you have to be willing to receive it. See, God has times. He has seasons that each and every one of us walk through. But each one of those seasons are loaded with the promises of God. They're loaded with the word of God. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 9 says these words. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, every situation, every circumstance. By prayer and petitions, pray to God. Present what you experience to the Father. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. Don't ask God for anything without giving Him praise. First, without giving him thanks first, without adoring him first, without magnifying him first, without edifying him first. Enter my gates with thanksgiving. Come into my courts with praise. 
those of you that don't know where that's at, go read Psalms 100 and go read Psalms 150. God tells us how to approach him and he tells us how to worship him. In those two Psalms, Psalms 100 and Psalms 150, go read it. So that you will learn the right way to approach God. Some people start praying and they start asking God for all kinds of stuff and never give him thanks. Never give him praise. But you have to enter his gates the right way. Glorious majesty. I just came to adore you, to esteem you on high. To acknowledge that you're the only true and living God. Knowledge that you said high and you look low. Without you, I'm nothing. You created the heavens and the earth. You see, you tell God about himself. You created the angelic hosts. You talk to him. You made me. I'm not perfect, but you created me. See, you talk to the Father. You tell him about himself. And in doing so, his presence begins to fill the atmosphere. His glory begins to fill your atmosphere. The anointing begins to come in. Your atmosphere is shifting. And you continue praising him. Thank you for this day, for my life, my health, my strength. You continue giving him glory, esteeming him on high. Then you begin to feel the fire of his glory. Then you say, Father, out of all you've done, I just say, hallelujah, I just say glory. Then you begin to lay your request at his feet because you've shifted the atmosphere with his presence. He's come in now, he can hear you clearly. He's come in before you now, he can hear you. Understand, saints, God don't just have materialistic blessings, but he has spiritual blessings. Signs, wonders, miracles, the word of wisdom is a spiritual blessing. The word of knowledge is a spiritual blessing. The gift of prophecy is a spiritual blessing. Moving in the supernatural is spiritual blessings. Praying the gift of healing is a spiritual blessing. See, God has spiritual gifts. He has five major gifts in the Bible. The gift of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. These are all spiritual gifts. They're all garments that come from God. They all come through the Holy Spirit. They're all gifts given through Jesus Christ. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers five-fold gifts. They're the desired gifts, the deacon the bishop, the elder, the minister. But the five-fold heavenly gifts, they come with the garment, they come through the Holy Spirit that leads and guides you and I for apostolic gifts. We call them apostolic gifts because they teach you to teach others, to teach others, to teach others to teach others, to teach others. Watch this. One of the things Jesus told the apostles before he went back to heaven, he said these words in Matthews. Give me a moment to get over there. Last thing I want to talk about and we're done for today. He said these words in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. He said these words. Jesus speaks. He lets them know I've got all authority. 
All powers given unto me. Is what he says. All powers given unto me in heaven and in earth. So now you know who got the power. Jesus Christ. Then he says, Go ye therefore and teach every nationality. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He gives us the appropriate instructions. Teach them and then baptize them. Then he says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. What I gave you, what I commanded you in my word, you teach to others. Not keep it for yourself. Not be selfish with the knowledge. I gave it to you to give to them because you're not going to be here forever. You appear when passing through. There's nothing like a man of God, a woman of God full of wisdom and knowledge that can be shared with the people, refuse them to share it, and take it to the grave. What useless. What good is it if you're cold? But if it's imparted in someone, they can say, you know, Apostle Spates poured this in my heart. He released this in my spirit, and it stuck with me to this day. I can tell you teachers, Miss Miller, Miss Fountain, teachers, high school teachers, Sergeant Bennett, high school teachers, Major Hems, high school teachers, Coach Thomas, Coach Simpson, that affected my life. principles that affected my life by something they said that stuck with me to this day. And the list goes on. Not just them, but spiritual leaders. You may not catch it at the moment, but it goes in your spirit. And one day when you sit down, God will bring it back up. You'll be like, wow, I never knew that went that deep in my heart. Last part of the verse. Teaching them to observe all things which I've commanded you. Lo, and lo, I am with you away, even unto the end of the world. See, we'll give it instructions. Those instructions come with conditions. The promises of God come with conditions. He blesses us because we allow his word to work in our lives. He blesses us because his word is full of promises. He blesses us because his word is full of promises. That's how we get blessed. God's word is full of promises. One promise after the next. We've got to see it for what it is and embrace it. We've got to see it for what it is and accept it. Stand firm on it. Because that's what God has for you. So if you're on the live today, Remember this, saints. The blessings and the promises of God are God's word is to you. It's to you. Everyone on this line. Pray for Mr. Reed in Jesus' name. Touch his body now in Jesus' name. It's important that you realize and understand, saints. God wants you blessed. His blessings is not about materialistic things. When you are filled with the word of God, his word brings his promises. Remember that. It is the word of God that will promote you. It is the word of God that will accelerate you. It is the word of God that will advance you. 
I walked in the bathroom this morning and God spoke something so profound in my spirit it, it literally shook me. And when he released it in my spirit, I started laughing. Because as soon as you think God has finished doing something, he'll speak something else in your spirit, in your heart. And I decree the word that God spoken to me in the atmosphere, that it shall be. I started laughing. I said, Lord. He said, yeah, my son, that's what I said. I, I, I can't share it with you. Because I believe in only speaking what God says after it manifests. I learned a long time ago, never share what God put in your spirit. Because the enemy will fight you every step of the way. When the Lord puts something in your spirit, it's for you. Hold on to it. And I'm here to tell you, God is still doing great and mighty things. And what he spoke to me this morning literally blew my mind. But I can't share a word of it right now. I've got to wait until he give me the strategic strategies on how to move on it. And as he lead me to move on it, then I'll share it. Never let the enemy know what God is doing in your life because all he's going to do is try to attack it. Try to stop it. But if you just do it, keep it to yourself. And then watch God accelerate and advance you. If you learn that secret, as even the Bible says, never let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. For you to be left hand, right hand. On the other video camera is the opposite. Right hand, left hand. See, you never share the secrets of God unless he tell you to release them. That's when you give it. Prophetic words. See, he revealed the secret things to his people. Notice he said he revealed them. Sometimes God can give you a prophetic word, but until he release you to release it, you hold on to it. What I received wasn't a prophetic word. What I received was a promise. The blessings of God. And I'm watching him fulfill them. God wants to bless your life. He wants to fulfill it. He wants to fulfill the words he's spoken in your heart and in your spirit. You've got to trust him. He's no respect to person. What he does for one, he'll do for another one. Believe it. Stand on it. Receive it. It's yours just for believing and asking God. If you're on this live today and you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and save him, say this, say, Father, I'm a sinner. I confess my sins and my iniquities, my ungodliness and my unholiness. Say, so your word says in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So if the mouth confession is made, and with the heart man believes unto salvation, that's God's word. Say, Father, today, I'm a sinner. I confess my sins and my iniquities, my ungodliness and my unholiness. Say, I repent and I ask your forgiveness. Say, Father, today, I accept and I receive your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. If you said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all is becoming new in your life. Open your Bibles now and begin to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the, four, in the, in the New Testament. The four books of the gospel, read them, learn them, put them in your heart, put them in your spirit. It's your responsibility to learn about your Lord and your Savior. It's not mine. It's not your parents. It's not your pastors. It's your responsibility to open up that Bible and read God's word for yourself. That way you'll know 
You can't say, I heard somebody say. No, you say, the Bible says. The word of God says. That's the shift. You believe it because you read it for yourself, not because you heard somebody say it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read in the book of Acts about the promise that God promises to every born-again believer, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. We talked about him yesterday. We talked about him on Monday. We'll be talking about him again tomorrow. Read what the Word of God says. The Holy Spirit is for every believer, every son, every daughter. God wants you to have the Holy Spirit. He's not a respecter person. He will pour in your heart. He will fill you with the Spirit, just like he did on the day of Pentecost. Believe it, receive it. It's yours for the asking. Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. It's yours for the asking. Welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And say, Father, fill me with the Holy Ghost. He's been in the earthly realm since the day of Pentecost. And he's still here right now. And he's yours for the asking. You've got to seek him until you find him. But he's right there waiting on you to invite him in. You've got to ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to come into your spirit. Invite him in. And when you invite him in, get ready for change because he will turn your life around. Welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, read God's word in the NIV, the King James Version of the Bible, the New King James Version, the Amplified Version. Put his word in your spirit. Read the East Ward. Read New Version. Download the Word of God. Read the Blue Bible. Read the, 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 the references of the Word. Study God's Word, as Paul said in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved. A workman needing not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the Word of truth. That's what Paul told his son Timothy. He said, study my Word. Study God's Word. Know it for yourself. Correction. And that's what I'm saying to you. Study the Word of God for yourself. Don't take anybody's word for it. God wants to activate you. The Word empowers you. It activates you. It aligns you. It shifts you. Study for yourself. Welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, these who are accepting you today as their Lord and Savior, thank you for covering them in the blood. Thank you for sealing them in the Holy Spirit. Thank you for aligning them with their purpose and their destiny. Leading them every day according to your will and your purpose. Thank you for binding Satan and we bind Satan and every attack of the enemy that would come against your will in their lives now. But we release your fire and your glory upon them now. In Jesus Christ, mighty name. Somebody say hallelujah. When one comes into the kingdom of God, the word of God says that we rejoice as they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. When one dies, the word of God says we rejoice. We moan when we lose a loved one, but God's word says we rejoice. When one is gone to heaven, we rejoice that another soldier, another son, another daughter has made it into glory. The Bible says rejoice. The Bible says weep when one is born. We do it the exact opposite. We celebrate when one is born. And God's word says weep. Because we know not what they're going to experience in this life. We know not what they're going to go through in this life. But thank God that we can pray and cover them in the blood of Jesus. And God can begin to lead them the right way according to his word. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Now, God's word says in Luke 6, 38, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. His word says, with the same measure that you give, it shall be measured unto you again. That's God's word, and that's God's promise to you. His word decrees and declares in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, But thou shalt remember the Lord thou God, for it is he that give thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with the forefathers. As it is this day, that's God's promise to you. His word decrees and declares in 3 John, Beloved, I desire of all things that thou mayest prosper, and be in health even as thou soul prospers. That's God's word, his promise to you. His word decrees and declares in 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. Hear me, O Judah, 
Believe in the Lord thy God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10 says these words. Bless me indeed, and launch my coast, and that thy hands will be upon me, and keep me from evil. That's God's word. It says, promise to you, I believe the word of God, and I know that God's word works. He proves it every day. If you'll stand on his word, if you'll trust it, you'll see a miracle in your life. His word decrees and declares in Malachi chapter 8, chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There should not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and your seed. So now cast in the fear before the time, said the Lord of hosts, and ye shall be a delightsome land. All nations shall call you less. Hear the Holy Spirit saying this, I'm going to release it. In order to see God do something he has never done in your life, you're going to have to do something you've never done. You're going to have to walk in a measure of faith you've never walked in. Obey the Holy Spirit. When the Lord puts something in your spirit, your blessing is in your obedience. Remember that, saints. Your blessing is in your obedience to God. That's where we get blessed. That's where we excel. That's where we advance. Amen. God wants to bless. He wants to increase. He wants to advance. He wants to enlarge you. Thank those of you that have been sowing to my cash app, that have been sowing to my sale, to my Venmo. We want to take the time to thank those of you that, that write us and mail us. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for your seeing coming into this ministry. As you can see, those of you watching us on the YouTube platform, we're expanding. We're growing. We're putting the seeds that come to this ministry to work for the kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to propagate the gospel all over the world in every formality, every shape, every way of, of, of delivering the word. We're working on setting up the platforms to make sure that that manifests. So those of you that are on the live, you can now download us on Fire TV. You can now download us on Apple TV and we were already on Roku. You can, let me say that again. We're now on Fire TV. We're now on Apple TV. We're still working on some major platforms, so we, there are more coming. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. My focus is to get on the global platforms because that's how you, you expand the gospel. When people see you, they can download it. They can share it with their friends, their family members. They can get the gospel 24-7 because we're live 24-7. And we give God the glory the honor and the praise for what he's doing. Those logos are not there by mistake. They're not there by accident. They're there because we're live, we're live, and we're now on these platforms. I say we were doing great and mighty things. We still are. And guess what? There's more to come. We believe in God to continue to accelerate, to continue to advance the gospel, the kingdom, all over the world, on your tablets, on your big screen TVs, on your phones. However we can get the gospel, spread it. That's what we're doing. And we thank God for those of you that hear the voice of God and you're so into this ministry. And we're putting your seeds to work for the kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is getting the glory, the honor, and the praises for what he's doing and for what he's yet to do. Amen. We bless him. We praise him. Now, Father, these sons and these daughters that have heard your voice and that are obeying your voice, we pray over their seed right now. You said Psalm 30, Psalm 60, Psalm 100, even the thousandfold mission. Now we decree and declare what you said in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11. I will multiply you a thousandfold. We activate that word over the seed. We decree and declare to the tithers and the faith partners in this ministry, those that are giving seeds, we decree and declare what Malachi 3 and 8 says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke Satan, the devourer, for your sake and your seed shall not cast before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Father, that's your word. We stand on your word. We decree and declare the miracle seed word according to 2 Chronicles 20, 20. Hear me, O Judah. Believe in the Lord thou God, so shall you be established. Believe as prophet, and so shall you prosper. I want to say this. 
I was speaking to someone yesterday. They shared with me how the Lord surprised them with a unexpected check in the mail from the IRS. The Lord gave me a, a word back here several weeks or several months ago that people were going to begin to receive checks in the mail that the IRS had been holding up. I'm saying to you again, God is honoring his word. He's doing what he said. I love it when somebody come to me and tell me the Lord is moving in a way that he has spoken through this ministry or spoken through me or through other sons and daughters in the kingdom. Because I ain't the only one speaking from heaven. There are many believers. Don't think Apostle Space is the only one. There are many believers speaking what thus said the Lord all over the world. Every state. God has prophets and prophetess that are proclamating and decreeing and declaring the gospel of the kingdom. So don't be deceived. Don't think you're the only one. God uses his people. He uses their mouth for his glory, for his kingdom. And I have news for you. There's more to come. God is still blessing. Expect the unexpected. Because I'm here to tell you, God is, it, I, I, I hear the word surprise and I hear the word bonus. Surprise and bonus. God is getting ready to surprise some of you. He's getting ready to give some of you some mighty big bonuses. And we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for how he's moving and for how he's blessing his sons and daughters in the kingdom. So your obedience to God, don't think what you're doing is by accident. What you're doing is you're propagating the gospel of the kingdom for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And because you obey God, God intervenes in the plots and the plans of the enemy against you. If someone right now, you've got a financial situation that's pressing, let me say this to you. Obey the voice of God. Do what God is telling you. Your blessing is in your obedience. God wants to shift and change and do what he wants to do in your life, but you've got to trust him. Let me tell you something. You've got to learn to trust God even though you can't see it. I always say this, and I'm going to say it again. If you don't have enough to meet the need, plant the seed. The seed will produce the fruit that you need. Trust God can't trust anybody else trust God he'll never fail you he'll never let you down and just when you think it's too late that's when he'll show up every time the Bible says the just shall live by faith that's God's word father right now we activate your word according to your scripture I'll make you the head and not the tail above and not beneath now we release the anointing over your word. Here it is. Receive it. We decree and declare money comes to your sons and daughters from the north, south, east, and west. We release your blessing, the abundance over the sea. Father, we speak your word. For you said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand. Philippians 4.19, but my God, there it is, shall supply all of your need, our accordance, riches, and glory. By Christ Jesus, we decree that word working for you now. We decree and declare the word of God in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. Bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hands will be upon me, and keep me from evil. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we activate the word of God to move in your lives now. Favor, we decree and we declare favor, the abundance and the blessings of God over your lives now. They laid the tithes and offering at the apostles' feet. And he dispersed the weather to the community. And the needs of God's people were met. We decree and declare your needs are met. According to the word of God in Philippians 4.19. Amen. Write me. Barry Space Ministries, P.O. Box 38. Clemens, North Carolina, 27012. That's Barry Space Ministries, P.O. Box 38. Clemens, North Carolina, 27012. Email me at barryspace at gmail.com. That's barryspates at gmail.com. Email me at that address. Also, follow me at barryspates32, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Barryspates32, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Follow me on those platforms. Follow me at bspace1 on Facebook. B Space One on Facebook. And of course, as I said before, you can follow us on the major platforms, Android and the iPhone, 
you can also download the app those of you that want to want to know how to download us on the itv or the apple tv or the roku you can download us just type my name in barry spates just type my name in barry spates and it'll pull up the icon that you can download uh, us on those platforms amen so we give god the glory down in the praise for each and every one of you downloading us on your, your different tv devices um, our television is shifting okay whether you realize it or not cable tv uh the old-fashioned cable tv is kind of dying everybody shifted the digital so now is the time to excel and to advance and to move the direction uh, that programming is going amen so we give god the glory the honor and the praise for what he's doing and for how he's doing it now amen all the glory belongs to the king of kings and the lord of lords blessings and favor be unto each and every one of you saints i hear the holy spirit saying uh to take a break so we're not going to do bible study tonight we're going to take a break tonight so we won't have bible study tonight i think i've given you word all this week so go back i'll post something maybe later on i'll put up something maybe later on uh but i'm not going to we're not going to do a live tonight for bible study so i'm going to take a break and you can take a break as well if you choose not to be led by the holy spirit as to how god leads you we'll take a break this evening there will be no bible study all this evening we're going to take a break and let everybody rest this evening so thank you so much you're coming on seven days a week and you're getting the word of god poured in you every single day so we give god the glory god and praise you'll be surprised how much you grow in a year's time in a few months time our people tell me they've been on the live for a couple of months and they've really grown tremendously so we give god the glory for you allowing him to pour in your spirit and one thing i've learned when the lord says take a break it's because he has something else in mind or he just wants me to rest and i've learned not to completely wear myself out when the holy spirit speaks and says rest i take that break amen because you never know what can come up so be blessed be inspired and be encouraged someone come on later this evening somebody send out a text to your friends or uh and to let them know that we won't be doing bible study tonight but we will be on the Lord's will and we'll live to see it tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, God's will. So we look forward to seeing you then. And join us Monday through Friday every week at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturday mornings at 8.30 a.m. So we thank you so much for your faithful support. Love you too. We love you guys. Stay encouraged. Remember this. God will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. And to God be all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praises. And remember, saints, we are made for his glory. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMessiah, is Lord of lords. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. God bless you. Love you too. Stay encouraged. Bye now.